Ocean Chapter 10. Oh, the dose you just from drugs. So you could actually be looking at some drug labels and trying to determine uh, the dosage of medication that you would give. One way that we give medication is orally, and the forms that that medicine comes in is in tablet form, capsules, or liquid. The capsules should not be divided, but sometimes the tablets are scored and can be divided and you might find that it is more economical to maybe prescribe a 40 milligram uh, pill and have it scored and actually only be going to take 20 milligrams. But unless the tablet is scored, you should never divide because you wouldn't be able to get the correct amount of medication that is prescribed. There's three steps in dosage calculations. The first thing that you do is estimate. So look at what is prescribed, look at the medication that you have, and give an estimate in your head as to what you think the dosage should be. And then memorize the approach, and then use for every dosage calculation. So you want to uh, be sure to set up this step when you are trying to prescribe the medicine. What is desired over what you have? times the quantity, and that would be the amount of medicine that you would prescribe. Again, what is desired? So the doctor prescribes 150 milligram of clindamycin. The quantity would be one capsule, and what you have is 50 milligrams. So if he needs 150 and you only have 50, so it would be 150 over 50, which is 3 times 1, and so the person would have to take 3 capsules. Step 1 we have to ensure that all the measurements are in the same system and the same size unit of measurement. And if not, we have to do the conversion. So, like in the last section, if we know that the person's weight in pounds, but the medication is prescribed in kilograms, then you would have to change the weight to kilograms and then make that kind of conversion. So the same is true in this chapter. We have to watch our measurements and make sure that they're all within the same metric system. Step two, you want to think, is this reasonable? So if you do your calculations and you end up with you're, you're to give the person five pills, then you know that that's an incorrect measure. And so you need to go back and do your calculations again. Desired over have times the quantity is the amount you prescribe. We're going to be looking at some medicine labels, so we need to talk about this just a, a bit. This is the name of the medicine, and this is its strength. 
50 milligrams. This is how many tablets that are in the bottle, and this is the name of the drug company that prescribes it. Also, on the label it tells us how we store the medicine. The temperature has to be between 15 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius, or 59 degrees Fahrenheit to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's very important because if we don't keep it within that, we lose the strength of the medicine. It also s suggests that we protect from moisture and that we keep it in a tight, light-resistant container. So there are um, lot numbers also on the medicine, and so that is written here. medicine is given in milligrams and that is the correct metric measure um, so we wouldn't have to do any conversion. Now if we want this person to have a hundred milligrams and our medication is 50 milligrams then you can think in your head and come up with the person's going to need two tablets per dose. So we think. And then we go back to our formula. What we desire is 100 milligrams. What we have is 50. So the milligrams cancel. And we would give two tablets. And we knew that when we stopped to think about it. But then we always do the calculations just to make sure. All right. In this drug label, this is an antibiotic flagell. 500 milligrams. This is the drug company. This is how it should be stored. There's 50 tablets in the bottle. The doctor has ordered flagell at 7,500 grams P-O-T-I-D. This means by mouth three times a day. And notice that grams and milligrams are a mismatch. So the first thing I have to do is to get those into the same units. I know that a thousand milligrams is a gram. So 75 hundredths, I've moved the decimal left three places. So 75 hundredths grams is 750 milligrams. So, I change grams to milligrams. This is what I desire. This is what the doctor has ordered. But this is the medicine that I have. So I reduce. Milligrams cancels. And I would need to give one and a half tablets. So these tablets would have to be scored 
in order for you to be allowed to prescribe half a tablet. If the dosage is not in the same size unit of measure, you must convert to the same system or the same size units. In most cases, it's more practical to convert to the smaller unit. So when we had grams and milligrams, it was better that we convert from uh, grams to milligrams because all we have to do is move the decimal. It also eliminates decimals or fractions in the calculation and keeps the numbers as whole numbers. So instead of 75 hundredths, we had 750 milligrams. And so that was easier to deal with. Now, when we have apothecary or household measurements given to us, we have to convert those into metric equivalents. So you're going to need your table close by, and I'm giving you a work uh, sheet that has the conversions, but you can also use your textbook. But you're going to have to have the, that close by in order to know those conversions. So the metric system is the predominant system of measurement for drugs. So we're all, we'll always be converting from household measure and apothecary measure to the metric system. And we have to remember our order of operations. If we have several things to do within a problem, you're going to multiply or divide before you add or subtract. Now, if division's first, you divide first and then multiply. And if subtracts first, you will do that before you add. So it's multiply or divide, whichever comes first. And then it's add or subtract, whichever comes first. Now let's look at this label of codeine. It's 30 milligrams. This is how we should store it. The doctor has ordered a grain, three-fourths of a grain, by mouth, every four hours, as needed for pain. Now you have to look back because a grain is an apothecary measure and we need to change a grain into milligrams. So I think when you look back you will find that one grain is 60 milligrams. So we're converting a grain to milligrams. Our medicine is 30 milligrams. So 3 fourths of 60 would mean that the doctor is ordering 45 milligrams and you have 30. So we notice that the measure did not match. We look at our table and find that a grain is 60 milligrams. And then we think about it. 
about how much do you think the person would get and then we set up our table the doctor has ordered 45 milligrams we have 30 that means one and a half tablets every four hours as needed for pain In this example, the doctor has ordered Tylenol. Every three to four hours as needed. doesn't give the order amount here which would be a, a serious issue so we have to know how many grains that has been ordered so we have to change grains into milligrams So once we get the milligrams over what we have, then we have a dosage of one and eight tenths tablets. Now that's not a reasonable dosage. You would never prescribe one and eight tenths tablets. one grain is 60 milligrams that is an approximation but another approximate equivalent is one grain is 65 milligrams so when we did the math and we came up with one and eight tenths tablets we knew that's not a reasonable amount of medication to give it is permissible to use one grain is 65 milligrams so let's see if that doesn't give us a little better amount of medicine to give so we have obviously he had prescribed 10 grains so there's 650 milligrams So 325 into 650 would be two tablets. And so by changing our equivalents to the other acceptable approximation, we are able then to get the amount of medicine to come out. So remember, whatever the doctor ordered is the desired what you have on hand listed on the drug label this goes in the denominator and then this will be one tablet or one milliliter and you multiply that to get the amount of medicine that you give When solving dosage problems for drugs supplied in tablets or capsules, the quantity is always one because the supply dosage is per one tablet or capsule. So the Q part will be one in that formula.
do not always rely on a formula. You have to think. Always estimate what's reasonable. And then this helps to identify if the dosage calculated is reasonable and whether it would be safe. 